Uh, thanks again for joining us. You know, businesses are in the midst of a digital transformation, and we know that technology plays an important role, but culture and collaboration, they're central to how we engage with our customers and our employees these days. So today we're going to cover a bit about how to regain your competitive edge in 2021 uh, by leveraging the modern workplace. Uh, as always, we're going to record this session for those who may not be able to attend live. And because this is a live stream, uh, all lines have been muted. We're still going to take your questions throughout the event in the Q&A. So please, as you're uh, following along, we want to remind you, open up that Q&A panel. Um, ask your questions as you think of them. Uh, we'd like anyone to take a minute right now, drop us a note. Let us know that you guys found this Q&A panel. Uh, tell us what are your challenges? What are your concerns? Share with us your comments and questions so we can answer them and address them today during our, our event. A little bit about Diamond IT. You know, we're a security focused managed services provider. Uh, we were founded in 2005 and we have offices both in Bakersfield and in Los Angeles. And we're really proud of our associations with organizations like Vistage and Evolve Peer Groups. Uh, we know that our membership in these groups, it really helps us constantly improve and mature our services and our offerings. Um, in these groups, we share ideas with other like minded organizations, and we all have that common goal of being a best in class service provider. Uh, we're also on the Secure the Village Leadership Council. Um, there we take a great deal of pride in educating the business community. Um, you know, we know it's really important. Um, it's it's to serve as cyber guardians. Uh, we want to offer guidance in our services to make the business community a better and safer place for everyone. Uh, my name is Jeremy Meehan. Uh, I'm the lead virtual chief technology officer for Diamond IT. Uh, with us here today is Matt Mayo. He's also going to be assisting us uh, answer questions here in the Q&A. Uh, but our speaker today is Ryan Cromar. Uh, Ryan is a Microsoft Partner Development Director at Pax8, and we're going to turn things over to him a bit to talk about the modern workplace and how to regain your competitive edge. All right, All right. thanks, Jeremy. Uh, looking forward to speaking to everybody today. As Jeremy mentioned, uh, my name is Ryan Cromar. I'm the Microsoft Partner Development Director uh, at Pax8. Work very closely uh, day to day with Microsoft and customers showcasing how to transform your business utilizing things like the modern workplace and other Microsoft solutions and working with a partner like Diamond IT. So before we kick off the, today, let's talk a little bit about the three cloud scenarios. One of the things we often hear from end clients is that it's very costly to move to the cloud or they're concerned about ripping that Band-Aid off and moving to the cloud too quickly without a plan in place or without uh, you know, worrying about legacy applications or processes. And so if you're looking at the screen, what you're seeing is the three variations of cloud that are available in, in today's channel. So when we talk about a public cloud, you know, we're talking about things like Microsoft Azure and hosting things in Azure and running your business fully in the cloud, which is obviously the end goal. And like I said, though, a lot of companies either remain uh, with that private cloud, that on-premise piece, uh, or in some kind of hybrid variation. And oftentimes it's due to, you know, legacy applications, line of business apps, or just old school ways of thinking and, and or even just cost really. And so all that being said, it's, it really is okay to fall in any of these categories with the obvious goal in mind to move fully to the cloud, but Diamond IT can help take you from that on-premise piece to the hybrid scenario, to that fully cloud model. And what's really cool about it is you don't just have to rip the Band-Aid off. You can figure out a really great process for you and your company to make that move make sense and uh, be very, very easy. So talking about that shift to cloud, right? It really has been pushed forward by that global shift to remote everything. You know, obviously in today's times that are uncertain of when SMBs are gonna be fully back or they are fully back in office or there's some shift piece there, you know, we're really redefining the way that businesses operate. And before, you know, you had folks in office, you could speak to one another face to face, get things done, uh, pass things off physically. That's just not the case anymore. So we've really had to try and figure out you know, how do we make this work and what does this shift look like and what are some of the components that we should be worried about? 
And so when we talk about the small and medium business, you're really reimagining the way that you do your work. So you look at some of the stats on the right here, you know, we're talking about 76% of all SMBs are changing the way that they do remote work. They're allowing their employees to either have some kind of hybrid model or remote, remotely work fully. And to do so, you have to come up with new arrangements that allow for them to do so, whether that's you know, BYOD or company uh, provided devices or uh, creating a way for you to access things securely. Coupled with that, let's talk about the collaboration and communication piece, right? You know, before you were able to walk over to someone's desk or uh, see them in the uh, break room. Now everything is scheduled. Everything is over video. It's either a chat or it's a, you know, a, 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 a video meeting. And so what we're seeing is this massive, massive increase in video minutes that are being consumed every day. I think the number is something like 4 billion uh, Teams minutes happen every single day because it's so widely used in the remote work environment. And then lastly, it's that security piece. It is so important to secure your remote workers now that they're outside of that secure environment or network that you had when they were in office. And you look at the average cost of a security tech, it's over six figures and a lot of SMBs would be out of business if they had that happen to them. So it's important to think about how are you securing these remote workers? What are the features that you need to turn on to make sure that they aren't accessing things they shouldn't be so that they aren't getting ransomware? Um, there's just a lot to think about and a lot of things need to be top of mind. So thinking about these challenges, right? It starts with the productivity piece. So as an SMB, you know, you really need to be able to enable your team to be productive. So they need to be able to work from anywhere with anyone. If someone's in the office and they're remote, they need to be able to collaborate. If they're working with a client who's abroad or someone who's just across the city and you're unable to meet due to either restrictions or just you know a snowstorm in Texas perhaps, you're, you're now able to do so. So you need to think of these things and what you're doing to solve for them, right? So the other important component, and this is something that isn't as widely talked about, is that change in team culture and the way that people interact. And it also goes with the employee efficiency and morale. Think about this, you no longer have teams of folks going to lunch together, going to happy hour after work, or having you know group meetings that, uh, that aren't over video. You know, that, that interaction is out the door for a lot of businesses. And it's important to think about what are you doing to help keep company morale? What are you doing to make your employees efficient, but still able to interact and have fun with each other? And it's important also to think about as they're um, having these interactions, how are they collaborating, right? How do they collaborate work-wise with, with this distance between them? So you go to the next piece and look at communication, right? Oftentimes when uh, co companies went remote at the beginning of COVID just under a year ago, they had a lot of solutions that didn't really play well together and they were able to get by when they were in an office and they could physically go talk to someone or make something happen. That's not the case anymore. So it's important to think about how do all your solutions play together? If you're utilizing a third party data storage, uh, you know, how are your company, how are your employees uh, accessing that? How are they sharing that company data? It may not be as secure as you think. It's important to bring that all under one hub in something like a Microsoft M365 that allows you to have that communication experience with Microsoft Teams, but also the ability to collaborate on content in a secure environment, utilizing something like SharePoint. So the other piece with communication is that oftentimes employees were at a desk, you know, with a physical hard phone or a headset, 
And uh, that's no longer the case, right? People are oftentimes working from home, working remotely. It's important to have access to a solution that is utilized across a ton of different devices. You know, it's, it's no longer just okay to have a physical hard phone. You have to be able to have a phone system that was designed to be used remotely so that your employees and yourself can collaborate and communicate on projects, on meetings, whatever those things are, but also doing so securely. You know, the thing that I'll, I'll probably talk the, the most about here is security. And it's because when people are remote and they're utilizing their own devices, the capabilities of attacks are just skyrocketed. When you've got folks that are no longer in your corporate network or in the office, you know, they're outside of that walled garden, as I like to call it. And at that point, they're at risk for phishing attacks. They might be using third party solutions that are what I like to call shadow IT, you know, things that are not allowed by your company, but because they're on a personal device and they're maybe just trying to get something done quickly, they're utilizing a third party service. And maybe that's, you know, creating vulnerabilities in your security posture. And it's very important to be able to provide your employees the tools they need and solutions that in a really secure manner, because if you don't, they're going to go find those solutions outside and they're going to go do it in a way that leaves you unsecure and a, a potential, you know, uh, risk of cyber attack. And then you see the very last data point under security. It really is all around personal devices these days. You have to have a motion for protecting the data and content within your network or your company uh, so employees can access it the right way utilizing their own personal devices because more than ever now people are utilizing their own phones, tablets, you know, what have you to access company information and work remotely. So, you know, we talk about productivity and collaboration and security. Um, you know, the question becomes, how do I accomplish all these things? How do I do all this stuff you're talking about? And the answer is you have to shift to a modern workplace. You really have to make the move to a whole new way of doing business uh, or utilizing Microsoft services. I'm going to provide you a couple kind of business scenarios and talk about what are some of the things that might be happening to you now with this remote work environment and what are some solutions that you should be thinking about or looking at. So think about this, right? You know, the, the question is, how do you and your business grow while everyone's remote? You know, everyone has, as you can see, a workplace without walls at this point because everyone's either working remotely or on the go or they've you know, they're holed up in an Airbnb in Montana for the next three months because they can't, they want to get out of the city, something like that. So really it's how do you enable greater collaboration and boost productivity within your team while you've got all these employees, you know, across the globe or across the city, or even just, you know, half working from the office, half working from home. And the answer is you need to be able to do things like real-time collaboration on documents, being in a meeting and being able to share from any device, um, the ability to access files securely and remotely. And then the piece that's really important is the online meetings and the security, right? So more than ever, folks are taking meetings on the road from their phone, you know, not from the office. And it's important to have that be a capability, but also in a secure way. What's great about Microsoft 365 is you get all the familiar productivity apps that employees use every day. Things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, the things that everyone knows and loves about Microsoft. But what you're also getting with an M365 is the collaboration and the connection to people and the ability to be collaborative and the capabilities to have meetings anywhere to get things done. What's awesome is that there's device management and security policies that are always on that are protecting your data and defending you against any threats while you're utilizing these services. 
And what's awesome is someone like a Diamond IT can help show you how that works and how to implement that and help manage it so that you just have, you reap the benefits of just having a really secure remote workforce that's able to collaborate in a really seamless manner. And Diamond is gonna be able to help you uh, take that to the next level. The other piece, you heard me say this before, is you absolutely now need to be able to complete projects with remote coworkers. It doesn't matter if you're across the city, across the country, you know, even across the living room at this point, it's important to be able to have the abilities to do so. And the thing that I always tell folks is, it's not a problem when you're utilizing an M365 or a Microsoft 365 solution because you've now got those capabilities to collaborate in real time. You're able to see each other's expressions as you're showcasing a presentation or um, you know, a pitch. You know, when you're able to collaborate and see each other, it really changes the way you do things. And then you heard me talk a little bit earlier about the capabilities of co-authoring and connecting. You know, it's really important to be able to collaborate on content, but it's almost more important to be able to access and share that across your internal teams. So let's say, for example, that you're working on, you know, a, a, a project with marketing and you're looking to launch a go to market campaign. Well, as you're passing those uh, samples of content through your internal teams, you're not going to want to, you know, be, have those pieces of content out in the wild, accessible by anyone but your team. But you're also going to want to be able to pass it easily internally. And so you're able to, with an M365, connect and work together across projects and easily tag in a design person or a copywriter or your Google AdWords specialist to help collaborate and build these things together in a really secure fashion. You can send group chats back and forth and what have you. If you attended our previous session, we talked a lot about the ins and outs of Microsoft Teams and how this all works together and what that actual functionality looks like. So if you didn't catch that, I highly recommend going and reviewing that or contacting Diamond IT to see what that can mean for your company. You know, one thing that's really apparent is that all companies are different and they utilize you know their internal solutions and processes very differently and it's important to know the capabilities of m365 so you can really ramp up your internal processes and be maximized in this remote work environment so en enough about the collaboration and communication piece this is the probably the most important part of remote work is the security components. You know, now more than ever, we've got this shifting world where everyone is is working remotely at least in some manner. And as you can see, right, the the nature of businesses and work has really changed. The way people are doing things day to day is absolutely different. And what we're seeing is a massive increase in ransomware and phishing attacks because folks are outside of that walled garden. They're now at home on their own devices, on their own networks and threat actors and you know the bad folks, they know this and they're ramping up their attacks because they understand that you know it's a numbers game and people are no longer secure and, and they, the, the cost of these breaches are increasing and the number and frequency is absolutely skyrocketing over the last 10 to 12 months. The other piece is, and we'll talk about this in a few, few slides here, is the conventional security tools. You know, in the past, you probably had, you know, firewalls and endpoint protection and, and certain things in place that, you know, work for an on-premise environment. But now that you have folks that are outside of the office and working remotely, it's important to fully understand what are the other security features and functions that I should have in place as a small or medium business to really make sure that my employees are absolutely secure no matter where they are, either geolocation wise or what they're trying to access within our company network. 
And the amazing piece here is that, you know, oftentimes SMBs have this perception that, you know, they're not going to get breached. They're not a focus. They're not a target. And it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, there's something that I tell all customers and clients to go do, and that is to check out a website called haveibeenpwned.com. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Jeremy or someone from the Diamond team to drop that URL in the chat. And what this uh, URL does is you go to this website and you plug in your email address. And what it will do is it will run, um, you know, a, 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 a search against the dark web to see has that email that you just plugged in ever been breached? If it has or, or been compromised, I should say, if it has, it will tell you here's the specific breach that your email was either hacked or stolen and you could potentially be at risk utilizing that same email. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm not guilty of this and I've done this myself and I think most folks would be shocked to see the number of breaches associated to their own personal information. But all that being said, you know, the reality is, is that it's not just these enterprise companies. We see breaches and hear about the Marriott and the Targets and MyFitnessPal and, you know, what, whatever the most recent one is, right? There's just so many. But it's really important to note that a lot of these, 58%, are taking place at small businesses. You know, in the last year or so, we've heard about these massive cities getting ransomware. I believe Baltimore, uh, Atlanta, uh, I think uh, uh, New Orleans might have been one. Um, and, and, and those are, are massive, massive ransomware ass. Those are like multi-million dollars. But the amazing thing is it's not just happening to these large cities. It's happening to smaller cities as well. Uh, I went to college in Florida and my roommate was from a small town in lakes called Lake City. Uh, you know, most of you have probably never heard of it, smack dab in the middle of Florida. And I want to say just about a year and a half ago, two years ago, they got hit for, I want to say, over $450,000 in a ransomware attack because they didn't have basic security procedures in place to help prevent it they ended up, I believe, paying the ransom because they had no other option. Now, you know, larger cities can, you know, absolutely take a hit, kind of like most large corporations. It's not going to kill them. But for a small city like, like Lake City, Florida, that means that people are losing jobs. They're not able to build new parks and libraries and do the things that, you know, cities want to do to make their, their uh, you know, the folks that live there happy or attract tourists. And it's really amazing to see that, you know, it's not these massive businesses. These small businesses are absolutely a target. And I said it before and I'll preach it again. The dollar amounts are massive. The average cost is around 120K. That's a lot for anyone, let alone a small business where that's probably your operating budget for the year, right? Like that is absolutely gonna, gonna kill you. So the other piece is most of these SMBs, they don't realize it's happening to them or they don't believe it. They can't afford to have it happen to them, but they also, the mass majority, lack the skills to deal with any of these security issues. They don't even know where to start. And that's where talking to someone like Diamond can really help you. Realistically, the city I mentioned, Lake City, had they implemented base security policies, things like MFA or multi-factor authentication or basic password management security, those two things alone would have probably solved any of their issues. The other component that definitely would have helped is some kind of security or awareness training for your employees. How many times have you seen it where an employee clicks a fake Amazon gift card or uh, a social engineering email happens and the CEO sends an email to finance saying, hey, I need you to go buy five grand in iTunes gift cards or cut a check to this person that we've never done business with. Those things happen daily in both the small, medium and enterprise business world. And it's important to have a plan for how to stop those things. 
and basic security awareness training can help probably more than anything. Yes, security tools are fantastic, but at the end of the day, the weakest link oftentimes is the end user. And if that end user has not been trained to identify security scenarios and things and emails to look for, you're absolutely gonna be at risk. So it's important to think about how you have these tools in place, how you can work with a diamond to make sure that they're implemented and, 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 and hardened the right way but also how do you train your employees to identify this stuff and not be susceptible to security attacks? The piece I wanna talk about here is that walled garden, right? We talked about before, you have employees come to the office and they were behind an internet firewall. They were behind AV. The email filtering was more than enough because that was everything you needed and then you had a physical backup as well. So you have all these employees behind this, you know, castle and the moat with, you know, full of full of gators and no one's getting through it kind of thing. And now you have employees that are on mobile devices that are working from more places and are getting hit more than ever with phishing, ransomware and social engineering. You know, I talked a little bit about how much the average cost is for an SMB in over six figures by simply implementing basic security policies and procedures, you cannot have any of this be an issue. Things like phishing attacks, ransomware, all those things are out the window. And by moving to the cloud, you not only uh, increase the capabilities of your team to be productive mobily, you're still getting a fantastic security experience because folks like Diamond IT are able to showcase and manage your security features and functions. So you see on the slide here, right? Our, our cyber criminals are getting much more sophisticated. You know, an example of what they're doing now is they're going into the dark web, they're procuring massive lists of data, including email and potential passwords, you know, they're literally taking the data from something like a have I been pwned type of list. And what they're doing is they're creating bots and those bots are pinging every financial website, every social media website, and they are auto plugging in your email and password to see if it works. If you have basic multi-factor authentication set up, that bot will hit a hard brick wall and because it's not worth the time of the hacker, they will just leave it and walk away and move on to the next one because their list of credentials is so massive. So what I'm getting at is, if you think that you haven't been breached, you probably have. If you think that there isn't you know, someone out there trying to use your credentials in a malicious manner, you, you're probably wrong. You absolutely need some type of security and management, and you need someone to show you how that works and how that can really maximize your team's capabilities and security posture. Think of this, right? Oftentimes you're accessing just about everything on your mobile device these days. I mean, cell phones were not designed to do this. They get lost, they get stolen, they get damaged. It's absolutely important to have not just the security component, but the device management pieces as well. So imagine you lose your phone, right? There is absolutely no reason to panic because with someone like Diamond IT, they're able to manage and secure your devices so that if you report that device stolen or destroyed or lost, they can wipe the data they can wipe the machine or the applications that are specific to your business, and you absolutely don't have to worry. On the other side of things, if an employee leaves the company and they were utilizing their own device to access company data, utilizing something like M365 with Diamond IT, you'll be able to shut down and wipe those devices for only the data and applications that are specific to your company. That way, if it's a personal device, that X employee is not affected and you don't have to stress about your data or information getting put in the wrong hands or in an X employee. 
So really what we're getting at is, you know, you absolutely have to have not only security policies in place, but device management and policies in place now that we are in this remote workspace. Now, I'm going to go through this, but it's important to think about where you stand as a as a business in terms of security. So whenever we're talking to a business around getting started with security in the remote workspace, you know, we think of it in phases. There's like I said earlier with the three clouds, there's no way you can just rip the bandaid off and just, you know, go full blast. It would be way too much. It's really important to build this in phases and work with someone like Diamond IT to help you get there. You know, you heard me talk about things like, you know, in under phase one, we're looking at securely enabling bring your own device, what it looks like to remotely provision and deploy new devices. You know, what happens if you get a new employee during this remote world? How do you send them a, a device and make sure that it gets in the right hands and only is accessible by that person? The big thing too in this bring your own device world is data loss and prevention around those the data and content you're utilizing internally. So you, turning on DLP policies allows you to limit who is sending what where and what things can be touched by whom. And again, the safe links and safe attachments, right? So think about every email you get with safe links and safe attachments, every email and every Teams chat you have will have scanned that link and that attachment and they will actually open it and deploy it in a sandbox environment to make sure that there's nothing malicious in that piece of content or that link when microsoft gives the thumbs up it is accessible and available to be accessed by the person you're sending it to or if you're getting that email from an outside source it will do that as well. And this happens in milliseconds, so you don't even actually see it happening. It really is just happening so quickly that you're just having the really great safe experience and knowing that you don't have to worry as much about what you're opening. Now getting into the phase two, you know, this is something that I honestly, you see turn on MFA with conditional access. What does that mean? Multi-factor authentication is something that probably everyone is familiar with, but maybe doesn't know exactly what they're doing. How many times have you accessed, you know, Gmail or social media where they've asked to send you a code to your cell phone via SMS or they want to call you or some other factor? That is what multi-factor authentication is. It's another way to verify you are who you say you are. Now we actually have this in phase two because before you even turn on MFA with remote employees, you have to have everything connected on the back end. So your active directory, which is your employee list and what they can do and what they can access has to be connected to the cloud in Azure AD. And what that allows you to do is from a distance, you can turn on multi-factor authentication for certain groups or individuals. And then you can also apply conditional access. What I like about conditional access is this. It's a secondary layer which looks at, is this device that the person is using to access the data? Is this a company approved device? Are they in a geo location that they're allowed to be in? Are they you know, not in you know, Siberia trying to access our company network? Um, they're looking to make sure that you know, the person has used the proper credentials and also that that person is only accessing content and data that they're allowed to. So it really gives a narrow and granular focus on what and where and who can touch what content. So if you're in any type of compliance related industry, whether that's legal or healthcare, it's a really important thing to have because it allows you to lock down who does what and where. Now, I could go on for days around WVD and Windows Virtual Desktop, but all of that can be summed up in this. A lot of folks are rem remote working right now, and Windows Virtual Desktop is a way for you to utilize remote work capabilities in a really secure and productive manner. Diamond IT can definitely walk you through what that looks like and how to build that out within your organization. But it's definitely something to think about as you as you roll out and continue this remote work piece. 
And then lastly, in phase three, it really depends on every organization. Everyone's different when it comes to securing remote work, and it's it's difficult to say, you know, do these specific things in these specific phases. You can absolutely kind of mishmash these phases, but the reality is you should 100% at least be looking at some of these things as you're building out your secure practice. So I've talked a lot about security and collaboration and a little bit around M365, right? So Microsoft 365 Business Premium does all of the things that I've been talking about for the last, what, 30 or 40 minutes. So you see on the left, right? As an employee, you're probably utilizing some kind of email protection service, a way for your IT access, a single sign-on solution. Uh, you heard me talk a lot about conditional access and MFA, as well as antivirus and device management. If you were to cobble together multiple solutions to give you that same secure and device management capabilities, you'd be looking at you know, quite a few dollars. Now, if you add on the collaboration and productivity, think of this. You know, think of a box.com or Dropbox or what those cost at an enterprise level. So those productivity apps and those file storage apps are, are costly. You're looking at double digits per user. Now add on some kind of chat base or collaboration tool. So what you're looking at is if you were to go and grab all this stuff on your own a la carte, you'd be looking at something like 40 plus dollars a month per user to get all of this done. What's great is for around 20 bucks MSRP, the Diamond IT team can help you get access to M365, which includes all of the Office suite that you know and love. So the, you know, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, Outlook, Teams, you know, all the things that you, you, you probably are already consuming but it adds on the device management. It adds on MFA and conditional access. It gives you the email security and safe link attachment piece that I talked about. So all these things combined, you know, really add up to a ton of value for that $20 price range. And when you look at someone like uh, Diamond IT, they're able to go through with you and see what's most important to you, kind of see what uh, security features and functions would work best, show you how to turn them on and show you how it really would function within your business. So uh, all that being said, you know, the things that you need to be thinking about is how do I keep my users or employees productive while also keeping them secure? And if you're not thinking about that, you absolutely should be because you could potentially be at risk for some kind of cyber attack. So I'm actually going to pass it over to Jeremy at this point. Uh, I believe Diamond IT has a killer uh, security checklist that he wanted to review. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. You know, we want to offer everyone today for uh, registering and for attending um, access to this remote security checklist. Um, we'd love to have a conversation with how Diamond IT can help your organization bridge that gap between remote and in office work. Um, you, you may be able to leverage some of the existing licensing and tools you already have. If you're interested in learning more about Microsoft uh, Modern Workplace, uh, Microsoft 365 or Teams, uh, how we can better secure your organization, let us know if we get something on the schedule. Um, give us a shout out in chat. Uh, send us a quick email if you're interested in getting something uh, set up. We'd be happy to, to have a conversation, talk about um, how we can we can help there. Um, you know, Diamond has a, a nice hardening, security hardening checklist here. Um, there are a ton of underutilized security compliance features, um, sets that are intended to secure businesses and provide visibility into threats. Uh, Ryan talked about a lot of these things. This is just a, a quick list. Um, a lot of these policies are set to defaults out of the box for simplicity and for ease of use. And a lot of them need to be hardened with simple policy adjustments to increase security. Uh, don't feel overwhelmed by this list. Uh, don't jump into your Microsoft tenant and apply these changes if you're not comfortable doing so. Uh, you know, we can help organizations with the hardening project, uh, help you review, uh, deploy a large number of these security and compliance offering policies. 
Um, you know, we've recently helped several local governments and law enforcement agencies with very similar projects to tighten up some of these things. We feel like all organizations can really benefit from these things. So again, just a sample list uh, that's available. Um, again, let us know if we can help. Um, I want to jump into a, a Q&A session here, Ryan. We've got a couple questions, um, if you wouldn't mind. Um, one of the first questions we have here is, uh, is where do we start? Um, so someone asked, you know, security wise, uh, what are some of the specific security changes that someone should be, be setting up right away? Yeah, I love that question. So uh, before I do start, I do want to mention to the audience, please keep these chat questions coming. Would love to hear your feedback and insight as to what you're doing for remote work and uh, what you're thinking of for your next steps. So whenever we talk to customers, the big thing we always get is, you told me a lot, you know, Jeremy just showed you the hardening checklist. There's a million things on there. It's really, what do I do first? How do I even get started? And the important piece is to think about what you're trying to accomplish. So if you've got a team that is, you know, partially remote, fully remote, uh, you know, any type of remote or mobile workforce, the very first thing that I always recommend to customers is you need to fire up multi-factor authentication or MFA. If you're utilizing Microsoft, you get access to the Authenticator app. It makes it very, very easy to uh, plug those, those uh, codes in to Microsoft and get access to your accounts very quickly. The other piece of it is you can apply MFA, excuse me, very, very quickly. So as your MSP provider in Diamond IT, these guys are able to apply multi-factor authentication to either your entire company, a subset of users, you know, whatever you guys specify. I would highly recommend that everyone in your organization is utilizing some form of multi-factor authentication. The other right. piece, oh, sorry, go ahead. So I'd love to explain that there's a reason why secure organizations like banks, why they force you to use multi-factor authentication, right? Passwords, credentials, they're easily to, you know, to compromise, uh, easily to, you know, stolen. Um, so that that extra multi-factor authentication, that text message or that push uh, notification from those authenticator apps, uh, that can go a long way to securing uh, uh, credentials and user accounts. Absolutely. And I mean, this is something that most folks are familiar with. They maybe just weren't familiar with the acronym because everyone has dealt with it to your point in you know, with a bank or other, some other kind of, you know, financial or healthcare type uh, website or something, or even your Gmail account, right? So uh, the other piece that I, I highly recommend is this, um, you know, if, if you're not already, you 100% should be utilizing some kind of active directory sync with Azure. And what I mean by that is this, uh, if you've got an Active Directory uh, server on site, a physical server that's managing your employees and you know who can access what and policies and all that great stuff, when when there are remote employees, if you don't have a VPN in place, you don't know when people are checking in, what they're doing, you know what they're accessing. By having Azure Active Directory set up in the cloud, you're able to say this person can access these pieces of content, this data, we, this, this person has these security policies applied to them, you know, because they're in finance, they maybe get access to certain things that other people don't. And it's really easy for, you know, an IT provider like Diamond to manage that for you, or at least show you how that works really easily. And what that allows you to do is kind of, I hate to use the term set it and forget it, but once you set up a new user with the correct policies in place, whether they're remote or on site, they will always have to go through kind of this uh, mini policy check of, okay, they're in the right location, they're on the right device, they're accessing the right content from the right place, you know, thumbs up across the board, this is good to go. The beautiful thing is all that happens, you know, in a fraction of a second. So there isn't any kind of physical process happening to the user. It really is all happening on the back end. What it's doing is making you super duper safe and secure. 
while giving that user just their traditional experience using these solutions. So that way you don't have anyone frustrated. Oh, I can't use this. It's too slow. It's too different. Everything's the exact same. It's just a little bit of a more secure environment and way to do so. So to kind of sum that all up, the two things I always start with, multi-factor authentication and having some kind of Azure, uh, Active Directory sync so that you can manage things in the cloud. I mean, there's a ton of other stuff. You know, ATP comes to mind next, uh, advanced threat protection or some kind of email protection is probably the next piece I would look at, especially with remote employees. So um, yeah, there's there, you could go on for ages, but definitely MFA uh, to start. I think that's number one. It's not even an if, uh, it's more of a when you're going to do that now uh, with 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 clients. So Ryan, piggybacking on that question, we got a question about that. Have I been pwned site? Um, I know I, I dropped that link in the chat. People can can go to have I been pwned p w n e d dot com. Can you talk more about that website and what they're going to find there? Yeah, hundred percent. So have I been pwned is uh, something that's been out for a while. And what this website is doing is it's aggregating all of the different dark web lists and breaches that have happened globally. So what you're doing is by plugging in your either personal or work email into that field on their site, it's running a query against all of these databases. You know, it's looking throughout the dark web to see what breaches you've been a part of. And it's going to find ones that you're probably familiar with and have heard of in the news because those are the ones where multi millions of, of uh, credentials have been you know, blasted out there and chances are you're a part of that list. But you may also see ones that you haven't heard of. And, and, and that's what's almost scarier is that you, you've never heard of these things and the news doesn't talk about it because they're not these massive multi-million dollar breaches like a Lake City, like I mentioned earlier. And what this does is it really goes to show you how not secure you are. And one of the things, and this is, and I think everyone's guilty of this, is utilizing the same password over and over again. And that is the culprit there, is not having multi-factor authentication, not using some kind of password protection is what gets you into these hot water breach type pieces. So once your credentials are breached, like I mentioned earlier, these hackers are going into the dark web and they're buying lists, pennies on the dollar for these lists for massive amounts and lists of credentials of folks like you and I who have had breaches. And like I said, they're taking these bots and they're utilizing your credentials against you on all social media, financial, all kinds of sites to see when they get a hit. And if they get access, they're going in and they're going to ransomware an account, they're going to steal money, they're going to transfer stuff to their name, they're going to do all types of malicious things. And what sucks even more is that it's all automated. So it happens so fast, you have no way to stop it. And really, the only way to stop this from happening is multi-factor authentication and having basic security policies and procedures in place. So again, going back to what do you do first? You do MFA first, multi-factor authentication first. It solves your issues that get caused by these breaches. And you know it's really, really eye-opening as a customer or anyone to plug your email into that site and see how bad it really is. And don't be embarrassed. I'm on there too. I think uh, everyone's on there. And some everyone's on there. Yeah, I think Jeremy's on there too, I'm right? Sure. Yeah. So you know, Diamond has a solution for some of these dark web hits too. You know, we provide our clients with a, it's a baseline layer of security tools. It also includes real time monitoring for dark web hits. Um, but we also use strong security policies, layers of protection to manage that risk of of stolen or compromised credentials. Um, we kind of got a theme here, uh, Ryan. I got a follow up question from Have I Been Pwned? Uh, the question is, is, what do you do if you find your credentials on a site like that? Oh man, that's you know what? It, after you cry a little bit because you're so scared, uh, you you the first thing to do go and change all your passwords, but talk to someone like a Diamond IT because you need to be trained on how to identify these things and how to stop this from happening. So the moment you see that you've been pwned or that you've got your credentials there, 
you need to be going through and changing your passwords and utilizing a password management tool uh, or in, in, co in cohesion with an MFA to keep yourself really secure. So, you know, the first thing that I would recommend is don't use the same password for everything. I know we're all guilty of that in some manner, but that's kind of step one. Step two is you need to be trained on how to identify these things. And uh, it's almost more important because even with security measures in place, if you click an email that is a fake Amazon gift card or a fake invoice or link to something, you know, it, it's a way for bad actors to get in the front door and, you know, security policies and procedures can identify the majority of those. But if Joe in sales or, you know, Susie in finance or whomever clicks a link and, um, and it, it, it gives access to a hacker, there's nothing that you can do because they've physically touched something. I mean, I shouldn't say nothing. I've backed that up. The training would stop them from doing so, causing much, much less damage. And also, folks like Diamond can help provide solutions that would sandbox, you know, a bad email or a bad link to help uh, that from being detonated within your business. So, you know, the thing I tell folks all the time is, yes, MFA is definitely step one, but you have to consistently be trained on how to identify these things. What are the different types of cyber attacks that are hitting the SMB mid-market and enterprise so that your employees know what to look for when this stuff happens? So, you know, outside of the security software, you know, some of the weakest links can be people and it's important to train those people so they can help uh, identify these things. Yeah, training is huge. Just this last summer, we got more of the customer. Um, they had a 64% click rate. 64% of their employees clicked on a phishing test that we had sent uh, just to kind of gauge their their uh, propensity to click. Um, so imagine if those you know malicious emails had gotten through, if two thirds of your organization, you know, clicked on that that uh, Amazon gift card or that uh, that compromised, um, you know, email, might have ransomware the entire network. So, um, well, and that's the problem is these attacks are so sophisticated now. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm guilty of it myself, and I'm an IT professional that talks about this stuff every day. So, if you know, if if you're if you're if I'm guilty and people like Jeremy are guilty, think of someone who doesn't talk about this every day, isn't a part of the IT channel, maybe doesn't fully understand ransomware or phishing, they are going to be more susceptible and more of a problematic use case. So, you know, it's important to think of these things because training is is absolutely paramount. And I think Jeremy said 65% of their of that client was was clicking through. I mean, that's not a not, not a number to be ashamed of because at PAX 8, we're one of the largest Microsoft partners in the world, and we probably have a high click rate because, you know, the training is just so difficult to get through. So, you know, don't don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed if you see yourself on Have I Been Pwned or you're, you've been hit by ransomware. That's why you have folks like a Diamond IT to help educate you and your team so that you don't have these issues again and that you feel really safe and secure and productive without kind of uh, having to worry about, like you said, these Amazon gift card emails and whatnot. It speaks to the, the importance of having uh, strong tools and protections, but also a good partner to look out for you. Exactly. We got one last question here, Ryan. You talked a lot about devices and tablets. Can you speak to, to which devices are supported or not supported for uh, the modern workplace? Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that, you know, happened before COVID was oftentimes employees had, you know, a company issued laptop or a desktop at a physical office they would go to. And now with everyone either being remote or partial or what have you, you know, folks are working off a myriad of things. And so you, you can utilize an M365 uh, across any device or sorry, any smart device, I should say. You're not gonna be able to use it on your grandmother's jitterbug phone, but you'll be able to use it on any Android, iPhone, uh, tablet, laptop, doesn't matter, even, even smart devices. Uh, you know, we've seen things like Teams Rooms recently where it's that uh, traditional kind of polycom experience where you're in an office and it's just this collaborative uh, environment that's really, really kick butt. So, you know, long story short is 
just about any device created in the last five, 10 years that's not a radio can probably utilize Microsoft 365. And what's even cooler is as a user, an individual user can put their instance on up to five devices. So as an employee at, at PAX 8, I actually utilize uh, my, my Microsoft instance on my mobile device, my laptop, my personal computer, so that if no matter where I'm at, I'm always connected. And the big component is I'm able to access not just email and chat, but all of my documents. That's probably the most important thing is everything is accessible from everywhere. And, you know, right now I'm kind of stuck in my living room 24 seven, but you know, once I'm on the road or typically when I'm on the road, that kind of stuff is paramount because I'm able to access it from anywhere, whether it's a, you know, airport, hotel room or a train, right? So it really doesn't matter. Cool, I know our hour is almost up. Ryan, I wanna thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today and for speaking. Um, I wanna invite everybody to our, our next event. You know, Diamond's been doing these uh, monthly live event series we really want to focus on educating communities and local businesses. Um, you know, education and guidance it makes the community a safer place for us all. Uh, we're going to be also launching a live customer immersion workshop in the next quarter, Q2. Uh, so be on the lookout for those invites. Uh, these workshops, you can have an opportunity to get a little more hands-on look some of this technology. Uh, but we're also doing a webinar on mobile device security. Uh, Ryan talked about you know how to secure devices, uh, how to uh, you know manage uh, you know endpoint security a little better. Um, so join us next month, uh, March 11th at 11 a.m. Uh, understanding more about MDM and Microsoft Endpoint Management. I uh, look for those invites. And uh, we want to thank you guys for attending. If you guys have any more questions, if you guys need a copy of the recording, a copy of the slides, uh, shoot us a message, drop us a note in chat. We'd be happy to get those things if you join late or couldn't attend. Um, and uh, thank you guys for joining today. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.